Brett. I'm here to talk to you about blocking today and I'm very excited to be with you. I have been reading your messages all weekend and I am really excited about all the people that are engaged here with us and I'm so excited to be talking to you about blocking today. So we are going to talk about, oh, I forgot to tell you. Okay, so um, our winner for this week, um, this last week was Mandy McDonald and she won the Superfine Fingering Zen Garden. So we'll be getting in contact with you so that we can get your address to send that out to you. And so we're excited about that. And our giveaway today is going to be a set of sock blockers and you can choose your size. And the way that you um, sign up to be able to win this prize is you would tell us where you're from, what you're working on, and just uh, you know share with us today. And then you'll be entered in the contest to be able to win the sock blockers. Let me show you what sock blockers look like. I have them right here. And they come in small, medium, and large. And the reason why I love these sock blockers by Bryson is when I was looking for sock blockers for all of you out there, and, and um, I searched high and low for something for you to be able to put your socks on, block them, and to have the air flow through. Well, I had I found wood ones, I found plastic ones, and all different kinds, but these wire ones totally let the air flow through. So when you block your socks, this is a great way to block your socks and do it quickly and have them dry quickly so that you can be wearing your socks. So I really like these ones and also you can hang them on a doorknob or you can hang them in your closet or you can hang them wherever you like. Um, I hung mine off the edge of uh, one of my cabinets where right below it was the heater vent and so I that's what I did to get my socks and I um, soaked them last night in water for about a half an hour to relax the fibers it's a hundred percent merino superwash and I am doing a pattern for you begin to knit sock knitters I really want you guys not to be afraid to knit socks and so I thought I'd come up with the pattern for you since I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for so this is the sock pattern that I've come up with and it is called Simply Ribbed Sock Pattern and it has an afterthought heel. And if we look at the afterthought heel and we see where we started that afterthought heel, we would have picked up the stitches right in here. And boy, that pickup looks great. And you know, we have, I just did a, a post, is it a blog post, Jim? It, or a YouTube video, right? And it tells you, I think it's both of those things, and it tells you how to pick up your stitches seamlessly and have them look perfect. And I went through that whole thing. So if you watch that and you want to do this soft pattern when I release it, um, then you can learn how to pick up those stitches perfectly. It's not posted yet. So no, but it will be posted soon. And I, it's going in for tech editing today. Thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> if you're watching, Kathleen is the one that does our tech editing, and she's phenomenal. So thank you very much for helping us with that, Kathleen. And then, anyways, so move on. So we started with the uh, Judy's Magic cast on at the toe, and then we went ahead and knit it up, and then we kept doing our ribbing. And right before we had, you know, we weren't sure how much yarn we had left, we went ahead and did the heel first. And then we came back and we used Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off. And I do my Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off. Uh, I do it a little bit firm because sometimes when you see it online, um, they'll do it, you know, like their normal knitting gauge. And it'll be like a little sloppy and kind of floppy looking. And that's not what I'm looking for. I want it to fit on my leg, but I still want it to look pretty. Anyways, this sock pattern is going to be released soon. So this sock has not been blocked, okay? And you can see the stitches look kind of uneven, and it looks okay. And this ridge right here is where I changed the ribbing specifically so I could have this kind of a cuff over it. That's how I knit those. Okay, and I'll show you the sock that has been blocked, and it's on the sock blocker. And what I did with my sock blockers is I left the size on the actual sock blocker, so I didn't have to try to identify what size sock blocker I'm using. I kept, kept this little piece of uh, cardboard on there that told it 
me what it is so that when I get the other size of sock blockers, I don't have to worry. Okay, so this sock has been blocked and I kind of pinned it up here with a couple T-pins because it's wanting to kind of fall down a little bit. But you can see how blocking has evened out the stitches. So this is a reason to block your items. They look much more professional after they've been blocked. So learning how to block your uh, knitwear that you spent all that time knitting on is actually, it's an important skill. And sometimes people overlook it because they're in a hurry. Um, but don't overlook it. You want your stuff to be beautiful and you want to be proud of it. And you don't want to have to apologize for your knitting. You want to enjoy it and love it to the nth degree because you put millions of hours into this stuff. So you want to enjoy it. So now we're going to be going on. I wanted to point out a couple um, products that we um, are selling here on Alpaca Direct. But let me ask where you're from and what you're knitting on today, okay? So we all like to share it. You guys, don't forget to post your pictures. We love to see your products. Oh my goodness. And if you guys can help other people learn, because other people are reading your comments, and if you can help me help others, I would so appreciate that. And I'm thanking you up front from the bottom of my heart. Let's do all we can to help our fellow people to be the best they can be. Okay, so um, uh, the first product I wanted to talk to you about, these are called Knit um, Blockers by Knitter's Pride. And the reason why I like Knit Blockers is they're not like a pin. If you look, Jim, if you, you point down at these mm -hmm. T-pins, you see how I put them, a lot of people will make the mistake and jab them in that way, but do you see that point right there, these points? When your um, blocked item is drying and you have it, those points like that, that's going to stay there when it dries. So we don't want to see that. What we want to see is it's straight like that. But with these pins, sometimes you can't help it because you're trying to pull the fabric apart so that you can see your lace project. And it'll just make those little ridges. So be careful of that. A couple things that I do to help prevent that is if you must use T-pins and if you must pull it tightly, then release these T-pins before it's all the way dry. Otherwise, those little um, indentation things will stay there. And it, it's unsightly. It doesn't look great. Okay, so now we're back to the knit blockers. So you see in this package... Here's how it's sharp. You don't want to get yourself with these because these T-pins are very, um, these blocker uh, things are very sharp. So don't gouge yourself with them. And you see the other ones so that size. They're really nice. They're handy. I use them all the time. I think they're like a necessity in blocking. I love them. And we sell them on alpacadirect.com. So let's take a look right here, Jim. Can you kind of show them how we have them along here? Mm -hmm. And so you want to prevent, like this one might be pulling a bit much. You want to make it as straight as you can, and sometimes you can only do what you can do, because remember, you're trying to pull it and open up the lace work. So that's why that's doing that. Okay, now we also sell blocking wires. And on the blocking wires, we have two different ones. We have a worsted weight one, which is a thicker wire, and we have the lace weight wire. And I want you to see the difference between the two. Do you see the difference between the two? One is very, very fine, and that's the lace one, which is on top. And the bottom one is a worsted weight one. Okay, so uh, let me show you the difference in how they bend. Do you see how that one really bends? Okay, that's really lovely and beautiful. But just remember, if you want it to hold its shape... It's not going to do that very well unless you really pin it in place. Now let's take a look at the worsted weight one and see. Now this one also bends, but do you see how it's a lot more structured? I don't know. To me, I kind of like this worsted weight one because it's not going to bend out of shape so that I can't use it. And I can still use it on these edges and get it to go around the corner just fine. So it's all personal preference. Even though this is called for worsted weight yarn, um, you could use it on lace weight yarn. Yeah, I don't, I mean, 
Okay, so I don't usually follow the normal rules. You all probably know that by now. <laughs> but um, the, these worsted weight ones can be used on lace weight, and they're my favorite. Matter of fact, they're the only ones that I've purchased so far. So, um, yeah, keep these in mind if you would like to use the um, these blocking wires because they are really handy and they're very wonderful. There's a question? Yes. And that is, is that a, a blocking wire down below? Yes, these two right here are the lace weight blocking wire. So I have one lace weight blocking wire going right to here, but they're only like 32 inches long. So what I did is I inserted another one and they're kind of crisscrossing past each other and then I have this T-pin holding them in place. So it's actually two blocking wires and those are the lace weight ones. But you could easily do the same thing, make this same shape with the worsted weight blocking wires. So. If you have any other questions or you need my help in any way, um, go ahead and comment in the comments and I will be happy to answer. That's what I'm here for, to help all of you. So go ahead and ask questions away. I do not mind at all. I love it. And then make sure to post your photos and we'd all love to see what you're working on. And I love reading your comments. Thank you so much. Some of you are so funny. <laughs> you're really funny. So I really enjoy it and um, I will... I get back, I work on it every day. I'm a little tiny bit behind, but I am working on it. So I will be looking at that again today. So anyways, but okay, so this pattern right here, if you um, haven't seen this pattern before, it is called Wild Cherry, and it's knit with one skein of Eco Alpaca, which is 100% baby alpaca. You know I love alpaca. It's my fiber of choice. So, um... That is what this is knit out of, this actual, that's a yarn. And that colorway is Eco Alpaca 100% Baby, and the colorway is number 1510 in that. But this, um, Melissa Goodale did a good job of writing up this Wild Cherry um, shawl, and I really enjoyed knitting it. It has a really cute little lace pattern, and I don't know, it's kind of therapeutic for me. I had fun knitting that. And then... We're going to talk about um, this pattern that I'm wearing right here is from another Michelle Hunter. Can you believe it? Oh my, she's so awesome. Anyways, Michelle Hunter has this book. And I keep telling you over and over about these books. And I, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse. What I'm trying to do is let you know that these... Um, patterns and her YouTube videos are phenomenal. She helped me learn how to knit. So I'm just trying to share my wisdom from and use her as a resource because she is an awesome teacher. And so this pattern Ridgely is made from Kabasi and it is, it's found in this book. Okay. So that's how you get the pattern for it Ridgely. And Ridgely is made with Kabasi and they, these are just a couple colorways and it is a cotton silk blend. Let's see, let me tell you exactly what it is. It's 55% cotton, oh sorry, yeah. It's 16% bamboo, 21% elastic, and 8% silk. And this is a really nice um, shawl for the summertime. It's not too hot, and you can get a lot of really bright colors. And the, I really like this kibasi, and it's by Haiku. And we have it on our website for sale. And so this is a great yarn to knit with in the summertime. Okay. And a lot of people make socks out of it too. I had a couple of questions. That sure. She said, what is, uh, Diana wants to know, um, what shawl you're wearing is beautiful, but can you let us know who designed and made it? Oh yes, this one right here, it's from Michelle Hunter. And it's from this book called The Knit Pearl Hunter, The Best of Knit Pearl Hunter. And um, it's Michelle Hunter. And you can find it, we have it for sale on Alpaca Direct, okay? And there's another question sure. about the knit blockers. How many do you get in a box? Oh my goodness. Okay, so let me read the outside of the box to you. It has 12 blockers with the 8 pins, which are these bigger ones. So um, 12 of these, and then 8 of these little tiny ones. 8 of the little tiny ones. And I only own one box of these knit blockers, and I find that it is plenty of blockers to do one project. If you're going to be doing multiple projects, you might need two. But if you only need one, um, that for one project, so you'd be good with that. 
So um, make sure you all post your comments in the comment section and you show us what you're working on and where you're from so that you can be entered to win any size of soft blocker that you choose. You'll be choosing the size that you want, okay? And then these are terrific. They allow your socks to dry quickly and you're gonna love these sock blockers. So you go ahead and put your comments in the comment section and sign up so that you can um, hopefully earn a chance to win the contest today. They were wondering who won last week. Um, Mandy McDonald won. And um, she had, she got the super fine fingering in Zen Garden. Remember we were showing this last week? Okay, so this um, Zen Garden super fine fingering is, oh my gosh, it's wonderful. Hand painted sock yarn. For you, th those of you out there that want to do a pair of socks and want to, you know, expand your sock knitting skills, here it is. Yeah. So, this is great yarn. And, um, so anyway. And then, uh, once again, the sock pattern that I'm going to be writing for all of you, I actually have it written up. It's going into, uh, to be tech edited. And it uses Nick Cole. And this is a DK weight, um, yarn. And it's 100% superwash merino. And for those of you who don't know what superwash means, it means it was treated, so it's machine washable. And this sock pattern takes two of these balls and I would recommend that you put in notes if you're going to make this project um, and use our pattern you can write notes under your order and say would you please wind this these little balls into a cake that way when you're working on your heels you can draw from the inside and the outside so you don't have to cut your yarn um, to finish off the hill and then you have less ends to weave in so make sure just send us a message and it's free to you We'll be happy to wind your yarn for you if you need that done, okay? And this, again, is um, Nick Cole. It's by Adria Phil. It's um, Plymouth Yarn Company sells this yarn. And it's an excellent yarn, and it comes in really pretty colorways. Well, you can see on the, the sock here that I have blocking how pretty it is. And do you see this afterthought heel? And this afterthought heel that I want you guys to learn how to do when you're first learning to knit socks is done with simple slip, slip, knit, and knit two together decreases. And I show you how to pick up these stitches. Jim, can you zero in right in here? See how clean that pickup is? And look on this side over here. You can't even see where I picked those stitches up. And I taught you how to do it on a YouTube video. So you look at that video and see if um, you can do it too. I'm sure that you can't. It's not out yet though. Um, yeah, the YouTube uh, video is not out yet. Jim just informed me that um, uh, the young lady that works for us and uh, does that kind of stuff is going to be posting it soon. Okay, so look for that. So now we're talking about blocking and we're saying, why should we do blocking? And we want to remember that it evens out our stitches it relaxes the wool so that the wool, after it's been soaking in water, um, uh, let's say warm to cool water, you don't want to get the water too hot because you might felt your beautiful project, especially if they're not super wash. So um, you would soak them in water and it relaxes the fibers, which gives you a more comfortable yarn to have on your body. So you definitely want to do blocking. And also, I wanted to talk to you about this project that we did. And we have it on our website, and it uses Vintage Chunky. And it was um, it was the thin blue line afghan. And we did it for Officer Moore. He was an officer in our town, and we live in a really small town. And Officer Moore went up to, uh, he had a traffic stop. And the gentleman um, shot him and killed him. And um, so we wanted to have a memorial put in the park. We wanted to help with that and raise money for that memorial to uh, celebrate Officer Moore's life and what all the police officers do for us as a community. And so we made the thin blue line squares. So what it involves is making these, I think they're 10 by 10 squares, and we have all of our knitters knitting some of these squares. Well, you can imagine when we got our big pile of squares, they're different sizes. It's like, okay. So we told them they needed to be 10 by 10, but you know, 
everyone doesn't knit the same. They don't knit at the same gauge. You can tell them what needle size to use, but everyone knits a little differently. So how we accomplished and were able to put this afghan together was through blocking blocking your projects and making those squares all the same t um, size so that we could raffle off that afghan and help to build that memorial in the park. So that's where another reason why blocking is really helpful to you. And also remember, if you have that sweater and the uh, sweater is a little tight in the arms, um, you can block it and make it wider by stretching it out and putting it into place when it's wet and allowing it to dry and then it has memory for what and then it'll stay at that larger size so that you can actually wear your sweaters and enjoy them. Oh, also another thing that you might want to think about when you're blocking items is a lot of sweaters are knit in pieces and you have to sew all the pieces together and maybe you your gauge changed a little bit when you were knitting. So you can block those pieces out so they're the same size so you can actually make a beautiful sweater and have it turn out and look beautiful. So I wanted to show you, there's a couple of these um, strips, I don't want to call them blocks, and um, I'm just going to set them out here. And this is a project where these actually have been somewhat blocked. Um, before, but I wanted to show you how different patterns. See, this is a pattern from. Let me show you this book. Ellen says hi from Western New York. Hi, Hello. Ellen. <laughs> Hello. Nice to see all of you guys. Okay, so here I'm going again with the Michelle Hunter books. I guess I'm on a soapbox today. But, anyways, one of them's called Building Blocks, and this one teaches you all kind of different uh, techniques for um, knitting techniques. So you'll learn. Each block has a, another technique that builds upon it, so that's a good learning one. And then this one is building with lace, where you use all different lace patterns, so you're learning and developing your lace knitting skills, so that's a good one. And then this one right here is the one that I'm talking about. It's called building in color, and I'm actually doing all these squares, and then I'm going to be making that. Do you see that blanket? It's beautiful. I want to put it on my bed, because I get really cold. And so I like the wool to keep me warm. So I'm going to make that. Anyways, okay, so here, back to the squares. So we know that when we knit different patterns, the patterns may um, have more stretch in them or less stretch in them. And these, when I knit these, these were all the same size, okay? And if you look down here, do you see how they're a different size now? Some of them quite a bit. And that is because some of the patterns are, um, some of the patterns when you knit them, they stretch more or less. Let's look and see what this one is. And what I did when I blocked mine is I did not weave in the ends because I'm going to have to take it out so it's all the same size because they have to be um, sewn together. And so I'll be re-blocking them. But do you see how every one of them is different size? And that was from blocking. When they blocked, they just blocked out differently. This one pattern was way stretchier, so it blocked out much bigger. So I'll have to take them out and, you know, take the pattern and make it a little shorter. But that shows you where the blocking is really important because if I had not blocked it and I had just sewn everything together and then blocked it after. I might have squares that were warped looking or strips that were warped looking and we don't want to do that when we're knitting because it won't look as beautiful as it could be and since our goal is to do, do the best that we can to make our work the, the best that we can, we don't want to do that. So that's another instance that um, blocking helps you with. There's a question. And it is, do you have to block every time you wash them, or is it just once? You know what? That is a very excellent question. And usually, after it's been blocked, you can wear it for a little while, and then you'll need to block it again. So, not every time you need to block it, but maybe, I find with mine, every few months, if I'm wearing it fairly regularly, then I would go ahead and block it again. But yeah, that's an excellent question, which brings me up to another comment that I wanted to um, tell you guys about. Okay, so you guys know how much I love alpaca. Okay, this is Baby Alpaca by Plymouth, and it's their hand-painted, it's like crayon colorways or what have you. 
and we sell this on our website. I kind of just made up this hat pattern. But what I wanted to tell you about the alpaca yarns is if you're gonna make hats out of alpaca yarns, tighten up on that gauge a little bit, especially on the cuff, because alpaca uh, doesn't have as much memory and it's gonna stretch out over time. So you don't wanna make a hat that is loose to start with because it'll go from loose to too big. So when you're um, knitting your alpaca hats and things that you're gonna be wearing, make sure they fit on your head comfortably snug because they're gonna loosen up so they're perfect, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk to you about is a wash. When you soak your items in the water that's warm, not hot, don't soak in hot water because a lot of these natural fibers will felt if they're not the super wash yarns. So we, we want it warm, not hot. And I usually do it in one of the spare bathrooms in the house. And then I put in a little bit of this Eucalon wash. And what this is, it's one teaspoon for a gallon of water. So this little one will last you quite some time. And we have delightful smells from uh, eucalyptus to lavender to grapefruit to the non-scented one. And um, this is a great fiber wash that you can use, okay? But there are other things that you can use. Sometimes people use a little bit of shampoo. Just remember that you have to uh, rinse it out. And then uh, other people might use a little touch of baby magic. Um, whatever you use is fine, whatever you choose to use. Um, but that fiber wash here is available for you if you need it. There's a question. How long do you block it? Um, you know what I usually do? I put warm water in the sink. I put the item in the sink and then I'll go empty the dishwasher or maybe go make the bed or do something like that for about a half an hour. And then I will come back and gently squeeze out the water and then wrap it in a towel. And then these mats, do you see these mats right here? They are made out of, let me show you the edge. Okay, my cats and dogs like to chew on these things. And I think Max, our new kitten, our little rag doll has been chewing on them. But do you see how squishy that is? And you can just poke pins right into it. What I like to do is, I like these big mats. Um, they're nice. You can find them at... Costco sometimes and other places. You can also get the play mats um, from wherever or you can use these uh, blocking mats that we have from Knitter's Pride. Um, they have, it's the same nice squishy foam and these are in cute colors and I kind of like the smaller ones because they don't seem like, these ones kind of warp a little bit so your stuff gets warped. Uh, it's uh, these ones, because they're a smaller piece of the actual foam, they'll stay the shape they should stay. But yeah, we sell these on alpacadirect.com and they're um, great for blocking as well if you need those. And oh, I also wanted to mention to you guys, before I get too sidetracked, I wanted to mention that Michelle Hunter's Knit Along is starting on the 5th and I... I've already had my yarn. I'm ready to go. So I'm looking for you guys out there to join me in this knit along because we're going to learn a lot. She's going to be doing a towel, I believe, and um, she always teaches us new skills. So learn with Michelle Hunter. And this is the yarn. It's called Concentric. And I think her project takes just one skein. And this is 100% baby alpaca in a worsted weight, and it's gradient. And you can see these different colorways. They're just beautiful. And we keep buying it and keep selling out. So if you need some before the knit along, uh, there's some on our website. Okay? So you can get those there too and enjoy, join us because she will teach us a lot of new skills. So, and if you can't, um, if for some reason you can't afford to use the yarn that's recommended for her knit along, the knit along is free. And they... Um, and you just choose a different yarn, something that you can't afford. I never recommend that people spend what they cannot afford. You should always um, stay within your budget. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so anyone out there that wants to comment on anything or show us your projects 
or share with your friends, um, go ahead and do that and you'll be entered in our contest. Our today's contest is uh, a pair of sock blockers of your choice. And these are the sock blockers right here and they come in small, medium, and large. Sorry, just joins from Nebraska, she said. Huh? Oh, hi, good morning. Nebraska. Good morning to you. That's awesome from Nebraska. <laughs> oh yeah, cool. We're all looking forward to summer, huh? And thawing out. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So, um, I wanted to make sure that everyone knew that Mandy McDonald was our winner from last week. And she won the super fine fingering from Zen Garden. And so, we're uh, be contacting her for that address. And... Let's see, what else are we talking about today? Oh yes, okay. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with steam blocking. Um, steam blocking can be used, I used it on these socks right here. So these socks, if you're in a hurry and you wanna block something and you, you don't wanna get your yarn completely wet, say you wanna wear your socks, but you want them to look nice, what you can do is you can steam block them. And what I usually do is I go into my kitchen I grab these really thin towels. Do you see the how thin that is? It's just a really thin towel. And what I would do is I would take this towel and put it in warm water. And then wring out as much water as I can so the towel is actually damp and not soaking wet. And then I would lay my sock down on the ironing board. I like to do this on the ironing board. And I would take this towel the damp towel that I, I have dampened and wrung out all the excess water, put it over the top of the sock. Then I take my iron, and my irons, I usually find the heaviest irons that I can because I find them, the heaviest irons do the best job of ironing. And also I find that if the iron's super heavy, I don't have to push down so hard to, to iron whatever I'm ironing. So what you wanna remember is put this on a very low setting. I wouldn't even put it more than about on three or so. And then I would just ever so gently not, don't put the weight of the full iron on the sock because what you're doing is you can squish the actual pattern that's in the sock and then your pattern doesn't stand out as much. And if once you do that, you kind of mess up the pattern so it's completely flat instead of being um, beautiful and raised and having the textures that texture will be gone because you ironed it right out. So what you want to do is just kind of gently, like barely press, don't press, just kind of sit it there and let it steam a second and then move to the second spot and just move. Not putting the iron all the way down, just gently moving. And then you would flip the sock over and do it on the other side. And that's how you would steam block. Now, things that I would not steam block is, I know that you have seen this cable scarf that I like so much. I would not steam a project like this project. You have such a huge risk of taking the texture out of these cables that it, it would ruin the scarf. All your work would be for naught. You've done all that beautiful cabling to, to have it flatten out so you couldn't see it anymore. That There's would a be a shame. Can you use steam blocking for larger projects also? Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. You can use um, steam blocking for larger projects. All you have to do is, you know, like if you're doing a pillowcase or whatever and you just hang it over the edge of your ironing board on either side and just that section that you're working on, just gently, not pushing. Do not push and don't set the iron all the way on the project. But it does, a, I mean, it does a decent job. Look. On these socks that I, I did, it does a decent job. The only thing I don't didn't really like that much is, do you see right here how it kind of put a fold in the, in the sock? And when you have it on your feet, you don't really see it. But when it's hanging up, you kind of see it. So that's not perfect. But, um, and so, um, I don't know, it's, uh, whatever works best for you, whatever you can do. Um, I usually just do wet blocking because you get that, um, the wool fibers relax, um, you get less itchiness, and um, you can actually put a little bit of hair conditioner in with your wool, 
and um, for wools that are, you're going, I don't know if I can wear this next to my skin. Well, just take a little hair, cream hair conditioner, and put it in the water while you're doing your soak for your wool. And, oh boy, it'll soften up the fiber and make it feel really nice. I mean, you could get some really itchy stuff and make it darn, I mean, next to your skin soft. So I would give that a try if you get a chance to do that. I would go... Also, let's talk about color fastness, okay? And the color fastness, um, sometimes when you go to soak your project, it um, the color will bleed into the water. So if it's a solid color, I would just go to your distilled thing, vinegar, regular white vinegar that you buy at the store, and I'd put in like a quarter cup. It doesn't really... You don't have to put in a lot, but um, it, if you put in more, it doesn't matter. What you're trying to do is let it sit in there while it's soaking, and it will actually make the color stick to the fibers, and then you won't have that uh, fading out of the color. You know, especially if you bought this hand-painted yarn that's beautiful, you don't want it to all uh, dissipate into your water instead of be on your actual scarf that you want to wear. So, anyways, that's another tip to use. So, I think that um, we're doing pretty good and I we've talked about everything that I need to talk about today. Just remember when you're doing your projects, finishing work is important. Making that, um, uh, doing that extra 10% and getting your projects blocked and making them look beautiful will in the long run make you feel so much better about your product projects and you won't have to apologize for them. So you just be the best you can be and do the best you can do and make your projects look beautiful and block them. Okay? So you have a great day. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.